Hey everyone, this is Nicole of Work, and welcome to the first day of my Blog Reader Appreciation Week featuring holiday projects. This, the first projects I'm going to share this week feature mostly lawn fawn stamps, and here I have just die cut a really large snowflake using my silhouette, and I'm using some Martha Stewart glittering glue to add glue all over the surface of this snowflake. And I'm just kind of moving kind of fast and messy and messy. And I'm using my Ranger craft sheet to do this on because it cleans up so easily. And I'm just taking some really coarse glitter also from Martha Stewart. This is the snow glitter and kind of pressing it on that glue. And then I'm going to set that aside to dry a little bit. This is the winter bunny clear acrylic stamp from Lawn Fawn, and he is just adorable. He's one of my very favorites. And I'm just using the stamp press. I'm going to take the stamp and I'm going to ink him up with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to be coloring him in with Copics. And when you use Copics, you need to use a certain inks, and this is one of the recommended inks for Copic coloring. I'm going to stamp him on a scrap of white cardstock. This cardstock also will be listed in the supplies on my blog. This is the Express cardstock from Copic. It's perfect for coloring with your Copic markers as well. I'm inking up that this, the Winter Bunny again and I'm stamping him on some masking paper from Inka Dinka Doo because I'm going to need to mask him so I can create the background here in a little bit. Quickly, I'm going to speed through coloring. I'm using some cool grays to color in the bunny. I want him to be white, but a more realistic look is to use some of your grays and such to give him some depth and dimension. I'm also using three colors or shades of red for his scarf. And you can see that first one's pretty light, almost a pink, but once you add the dimension with the other reds, it really comes to life. So there he is, and I made a couple mistakes. I'm using my colorless blender. I did blend the grays a little bit with it to just push that red color back inside the line. And here I'm coloring his little sled, and I started with the darkest first and went to the lightest. I don't always do that, but sometimes with the smaller um, space, I will start with my dark and go to the light and blend it all together. And here I'm just cutting out the mask real quick. Kind of went out of frame. I apologize for that. Um, but I'm cutting, I'm not cutting the like rails of the little sled or anything like that. I'm just cutting out the portions that I've colored. Because it won't matter if I stamp over those black areas. And then once I have that cut out, I'm going to adhere it right over my colored image. And I'm using a two and three quarters inch circle punch to punch out my little stamped piece. And then I'm taking another set from Lawn Fawn. This is the Frosties and they are wonderful snowflakes, perfect for so many things. And I'm just adhering a whole bunch randomly to my stamp press. I'm going to ink them up with some Versamark real good and stamp that right over my bunny. Had a little bit area I missed, so I'm going to stamp that with some Versamark as well. And then I'm going to take some white embossing powder to adhere over that stamped piece. And then I'll just heat that up real good with my embossing gun. Now I'm taking some tumbled glass distress ink and adhering it over where I have that embossed image. And just sped this up real quick, but you can see that leaves a nice blue background with the white snowflakes, and there's the little guy when you take the masking paper off. I've also die cut, or I punched a circle from gray cardstock. It's a three inch circle punch, and then the scallop is a Sizzix die cut that's just a tad bit bigger. So I'm just layering these all together. And I'm adhering some Hero Arts gemstones to the centers of those snowflakes. Looks like one of them got away from me. Then I'm just going to adhere all of these layered pieces together. Now I cut another snowflake with my silhouette and I applied some spray adhesive to it and I'm just adhering that to the back of my glittered piece. It gives it a little bit more stability and 
and weight, added some foam adhesive to the back of my stamped piece and adhered it to the center of my snowflake, punched a little hole and threading through some baker's twine for my ornament hanger, and then I just tied a bow with some paper tray ink red ribbon here. And I'm going to adhere that right to the top of my piece, and there is my ornament. For the next project, I'm speeding through this pretty quickly. I am stamp. I adhered some soft suede Stampin' Up! ink to that music note background from Hero Arts. And now I'm taking some antique linen distress ink, and I'm adhering that over the entire surface of this music background. I want it to look like old music note paper. Um, so, looking for my distressor tool. Now I'm just going to take my distressor tool and distress the edges. This is a technique I like to use a lot where you distress the edges really good. Then you go back with your distress ink and add it along that edge. And where it's distressed, it picks up more of the ink and gets a little darker. I'm using my stamp press again. And I'm using the fireplace from the Christmas Cozy set. And I'm also stamping the stockings. And I'm coloring the stockings here, but I did go back and I changed the colors that I used for the stockings, so those colors will be listed on my blog. And here I'm just really quick adding color to the fireplace with a couple of shades of red. And you can see I'm not being neat or nice about it at all. I'm going back over it with my lighter color. And then I'm going in with a warm gray, also will be listed on my blog, which one I used and then back over it with my lightest red again and using a little browns for the top of or the mantle part of my fireplace and the reason i didn't do this nice is because i'm cutting this out okay next i cut a four and a quarter by eight and a half piece of cardstock this is the simply chartreuse cardstock from paper tray ink and i'm making a square card i also cut down that music note background and I've already cut out all my pieces, the fireplace, and all three stockings. There you can see them all finished and colored. I used the Martha Stewart scoring board to score my card in half, and so I had a nice score mark there. And then I'm going to use a banner from the Bannerific Lawn Fawn set and the greeting from the Cozy Christmas set. So I'm going to stamp that with this, the uh, Soft Suede Stampin' Up! A soft suede Stampin' Up! ink um, on that Simply Chartreuse cardstock. And now I'm using the large plaid from Hero Arts to add a little bit of texture to my banner. I'm going to use my stamp press again. I'm going to ink up the greeting with Versamark. Stamp that right to the center of my banner. And I'm using some red embossing powder. And I'll heat that up really good. Okay, I have all of my elements now. I did cut a little square of black cardstock to put behind my fireplace for a more realistic look. And I'm gonna take some foam adhesive to place on the back. Oh, and I forgot I wanted to add my stockings. So before I finish that, I am taking some mini bra uh, metal brads. I'm just gonna poke a little hole and hang them from my fireplace. And these are just some teeny tiny brads um, they're either from Close to My Heart or also the paper studio that has a line at Hobby Lobby carries these as well. I think these are just the gold ones and they're just teeny tiny so it looks like a little nail that you've hung the stocking on there. So I'll hang all of those. Then I'm going to finish adding my foam adhesive to the back of my piece. I love these Lawn Fawn stamps. They're so cute. So there you can see the fireplace adhered to the card, and I'm also going to take some foam adhesive to the banner. I want to make sure that I had that all correct, so that's why I laid it back over there to make sure I left room for where it overlays the fireplace. And there is my card. For more information, please visit my blog on November 1st, 2010. Thanks for watching.